Namaste. I want to share something very wonderful with you. And that is our philosophical background. Yes, we're giving instruction now, or at least showing an example <laughs> of uh, karma yoga and bhakti yoga. But our actual background is jnana. Uh, jnana means realization of Brahman, the truth, God. Although God is a very poor term. So what is karma and uh, bhakti yoga in a context of jnana? It's not your usual religious context at all. But it's a very high philosophical idea which has been passed down from the earliest sages of the Upanishads. So what is that background? Well, it's actually very easy to understand and it's very easy to misunderstand. And so we're going to cover that toward the end of the video. Who are you? Do you really exist? Of course, everybody's going to say, yes, of course I exist. I, I am. Well, how do you know that you are? How do you know that you exist? If I put you in a completely dark room and ask you that question, do you exist? You're going to give the same answer. Yes, of course I exist. How do you know? Well, Western philosophy went on a completely wrong track. When philosophers like Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. No, because you can stop your thinking by practice of yoga and still be perfectly aware that you exist. Now, the actual answer to that question is, we are aware of our awareness. We are conscious of our consciousness. And try this sometime. Just contemplate the fact that I am conscious. I am aware. Awareness, by the way, is previous to consciousness. It's senior to consciousness. It's prior to the arousal of consciousness. So I am aware that I am aware. Even if I'm not conscious of anything, let's say in a dark room, uh -huh. I don't have to be conscious of something outside of myself. I know that I am because I am aware. I have the potential for consciousness, and that's awareness. So, what is this awareness? <laughs> well, if you look into it, and this, by the way, is the whole substance of Raja Yoga. You start to look into what is this consciousness? What is this awareness? Huh? And I don't mean look into it in the mind, in words, or through philosophy, or studies, or anything. I mean directly look into it experientially. I remember very clearly when I graduated from bhakti and karma yoga to raja yoga. I was sitting on a park bench in Mexico City writing books and I was taking a break and walking in the park and I was sitting on a bench and thinking, isn't it amazing how this consciousness can even be aware of the physical world? It seems to have nothing to do with it. How can consciousness connect with matter? And this, looking into this question, not philosophically, not conceptually, but experientially, led to all kinds of consequences and adventures. So this is the question. 
How is it that I am aware? What is awareness, really? It's like a mirror. And anything you hold or put in front of a mirror will show up in the mirror. The mirror takes on the qualities of whatever you put in front of it. If you put a red cloth in front of a mirror, it reflects red. If you put a green cloth, it reflects green. Consciousness is similar to a mirror. But a, a mirror is just flat. Consciousness is a space, a multidimensional space. And whatever you put in that space, it will take on the qualities and reflect that thing. So this is awareness. And when it comes in contact with this object, this is consciousness. So consciousness is a really amazing thing. It's aware of itself. So this quality of self-awareness is not part of the physical world. Because if we investigate the physical world, physical objects are not aware of themselves. The body is not aware of itself. It's a machine. It functions according to certain laws, which are very sophisticated and wonderful. And we really don't even understand <laughs> how the body digests food, how the brain works, and so on. We don't really understand. But this has been evolved by nature over millions and millions of years. So it's a very wonderful, sophisticated machine, but it's not aware of itself. Only when we come into this machine, we are aware of ourselves. And what are we? That's the question, who am I? What am I? Well, so far we know we are consciousness and we are aware of ourselves. We are aware of being aware. So I invite you to try this, to just sit and be aware of being aware. It's a wonderful thing. If we look into this, we cannot tell one awareness from another awareness because they have no boundaries. Huh? You can be aware of something right in front of your nose or you can be aware of some stars millions of, of miles away, millions of light years away even. So this awareness has no boundaries. You cannot tell one awareness from another awareness. Individuality, identity, uh, separateness is of the material world. It's of bodies and minds, not of consciousness. One consciousness is the same as another consciousness. It's just the objects that we put in front of it, including thoughts and so on, the mind. That's the only difference between them. Otherwise, in their essence, they are the same. Now, what is their essence? Well, again, they are a reflection. A reflection of what? Uh, well, just like after a rain, there are many small puddles everywhere. And if the sun or the moon comes out, each puddle reflects the same image, isn't it? There's only one sun, there's only one moon, but each puddle will have a tiny reflection of that same image. In the same way, each individual consciousness is a reflection of the Supreme Consciousness, Brahman, or God. I really don't like that word, God. <laughs> Brahman is much better because Brahman from the beginning is without qualities. Just like a mirror, a mirror has no quality of itself. It only reflects whatever quality is put in front of it. And in the same way, consciousness has no quality of its own except awareness. And it reflects whatever 
is put into its space. So since we can't tell one consciousness from another, <laughs> they're all reflections of the same thing, so they're all similar. Huh? The only way to tell them apart is by their uh, embodiment, by their minds, by their thoughts. But these aren't conscious. The mind is also a machine. It's like a computer. A very sophisticated computer, but still just a machine. It's not aware of itself. Only we are. So what does that mean? That means we are Brahman for all practical purposes. There's no way to tell one consciousness apart from another. There's no way to tell the reflection apart from the source. Because they have the same quality. Awareness of awareness. So now that doesn't mean, <laughs> and you'll hear some people saying very glibly, I am God. No, that doesn't mean that you are God. <laughs> that's called monism. And that's a very dangerous, very destructive philosophy. Fascism and Nazism, Marxism and Dao Maoism, not Taoism, Maoism, are based on the philosophy of monism. The uh, extraordinary uh, concentration of wealth in the hands of the few uh, elites, which has made poverty stricken the whole world, is an outgrowth of monist philosophy, theosophy to be precise. So monism is very, very dangerous because one can say, I am God, therefore I can do whatever I want and there are no consequences. It means total immorality, total corruption. It means dictatorial, fascistic Nazism. And we see this in corporations. Corporations are amoral beings. Abstractions, yeah, they're not real, but they give people the excuse to act only for profit. They're very, very dangerous. And this is all based on monistic philosophy. Our philosophy is called Advaita, which means not to, non-different. Just like the small reflections of consciousness and awareness in the individual are non-different from the Supreme Brahman. We're not going to say they are the same because obviously they're not the same. The reflection is the same, but it's also different. In the same way, the reflection of the Supreme in the consciousness of the individual is the same in quality as the Supreme, but different in quantity. Still, in the ultimate issue, there's no way to tell them apart. <laughs> because when awareness is aware of itself without any other object, practically speaking, there is no difference between the individual and Brahman. But that doesn't mean he thinks himself of it as an individual. He doesn't. Why? Because in that state, there's nothing to compare it with. You can't say, I'm an individual because I'm different, because there is nothing to be different from in this state of non-duality, Advaita. You see, people say, talk about oneness. But... Actual oneness means nothingness. Because in oneness, real oneness, there is no second thing to compare yourself to and say, oh, I'm all one. Huh? There's no way to keep score. These profound philosophical implications of the idea of oneness are lost on most people. And so there's a a phony, counterfeit 
philosophy that calls itself Advaita, but is actually monism. Uh, so beware of this. Just like there are many people saying, claiming that they're teaching or practicing bhakti, but they're actually practicing karma. Similarly, there are many, many people who are claiming to practice jnana or advaita, but they're actually into raja yoga. Now, raja yoga is a perfectly fine discipline all by itself. And it's a necessary stage on the path for everyone. But due to the megalomaniacal nature of the mind, huh? just like the people who are into karma yoga say, karma is everything. <laughs> the people who are into raja yoga and the Buddhist philosophy and meditation and stuff like that, they want to say that that is everything, but it's not. It's just another stage on the path. Meditation <laughs> is the individual self contemplating the Supreme Self. But let me ask you, are there two selves? That one self can contemplate the other? No. There's only one self with a capital S. So it's not possible for the self to contemplate itself. Be aware of itself, yes, but not to contemplate, not to concentrate on itself as an object. The self is only a subject. Try to understand. So if there's this uh, subject-object duality, as in meditation, that's Raja Yoga. And it's still duality. So to say that everything is one is a statement of duality. Because who is there to say that? If everything is really one, there is no individual. Try to understand this. Well, you can't understand it. You have to experience it. And that means years of deep meditation. I'll be honest with you. There is no shortcut. But people want a shortcut. They want to take it cheaply. They want to just get some knowledge in their mind and then declare themselves enlightened, but they're not. The actual experience of enlightenment is all-inclusive and all-embracing. And one does not say, well, I'm enlightened and you're not. Huh? <laughs> or I'm not enlightened and you are. The same difference. Huh? Both of these statements, Ramana Maharshi said, Ramana, there's Ramana right there. He said, both of these statements are broad grounds for ridicule. And he was extremely sarcastic toward people who declared themselves enlightened or unenlightened. So try to understand. <laughs> try to understand. We're not teaching monism. We're not teaching the counterfeit. We're teaching the real thing, Advaita. Not oneness, but not two-ness. <laughs> Non-duality. And that's the background for all our teachings. Aum Tatsat. Aum Harihi Aum.